What's going on boys and all guys here, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, you're gonna see a segment from my group coaching sessions. Now, this will help you improve in FIFA, this video, um, but if you want to know how to join one of these group coachings, I do my group coachings exclusively this year on Gamers Academy. Um, they currently have, I currently have a deal right now, if you scroll down the link in the description or on a pinned comment, you can basically get a seven day free trial. So I normally do my coaching sessions on a Tuesday at 7 p.m. UK time. But the link is down below in the description. I'll go over this at the end of the video for more information, but let's get straight into the video. When you get into the final third deep in these positions, there's something you're gonna have to do is recycle. Now, a lot of people, when they get the ball going forward, they like to score from counter attacks. Now, once you get against the better players, the counter attacks are not gonna be there. So what I mean by this is, let's say for example, you go forward. This is gonna be out of habit that you'll have to get used to. So. I'm just gonna show you. So this is a full game. Um, the little blob on your screen that you can see is my eyesight. So you can see generally where I'm looking, okay? Now this is something that's gonna be hard in the beginning, but let's say for example, you have the ball or you lose the ball and you get a counter. So like this example here, I get a counter attack. I do a quick one, two. And let's say for example here, there is nowhere to go. You're gonna have to get used to going back and recycling the ball. For example, like here and here. If you cannot go forward, let's say example, there's a pass to that striker, but you know he's man marking that pass, you should not make that pass. Because if you lose it, and this is what I meant by getting counter attack, if you lose the ball here, your player is out of position. And if he counter attacks you, he's just got to do a through ball to a striker and he will get it behind. So it's actually safe, especially if it's nil nil or you're winning one nil, don't take the risk. A lot of people here, when they get the ball, they decide to do a driven pass, which is an R1 plus X. I'm sure many of you guys use it. It's a I want to overuse mechanic because people just think, okay, let me just spam it to get the ball to the striker, but that's not the correct thing to do. And you'll see what I mean when I go forward. Now you can see over here, when I get the ball, I see Dembele making a run going forward. Now in this situation, I'm playing a 4-2-3-1. So you can see my lineup, I got a cam, my three cams, my striker, my two CDMs. Now, realistically, the more attacking formation you have, like a 4-4-2, you're gonna have two strikers, it'll be easier for you. But in my opinion, when I go forward, I don't look, for example, where's my striker? He should be here. I look at it and think, okay, he's not here yet. Let me recycle the ball. And this is the difference between, as I say, a gold and elite player. A lot of gold players, when they get to this situation, they're outside the box thinking, okay, you know what? Let me force the ball to my striker. If I can't go through, there's one of two things that I do. I either recycle the ball or I do a one-two. So the way that I do it is I do a one-two backwards. That way you send one of your cams inside the box or recycle the ball. So you can see like here, when I get the ball back to my CDM, then you can see how Son has repositioned himself into a striker role. Now, I don't look at this. You can see my eyesight. I'm mainly concentrating on the ball because he's going to, remember how I said to you how you defend? He's going to man mark his players inside the box. You want to, you want to pass the ball to your striker, of course, but he's going to defend it. The first thing is to create in the angle. Now, when you pass the ball between your CDMs, your opponent's gonna move his, his center. So let's say, for example, like here. In this situation, realistically, this is a passing option and this is a passing option. I could make these options. So my opponent's gonna react to it and he's gonna move his CDM downwards to cut the passing lanes. Similarly to how you defend. When I pass the ball to my CDM, it then opens up the other side. Now, fortunately, there's no other players here. Remember, he can only control one player at a time in theory. He can use teammate contain, maybe he can run towards you and mark someone else. But if you keep switching between your two CDMs and you recycle the ball, there will always be a chance. And this is what I'm trying to say to you. There's no secret formula. When you get the ball here, it's improvisation. So if you have nowhere to go and you can't go forward, don't force the ball. Now, what I like to do is, as I mentioned to you in the very first episode is, what would be the best thing to do, for example, here? Has anyone got a, an idea what they would do here? So let's say, for example, there's nothing to do. Let's ignore the other CDM, for an example. If you want to create an attacking chance and want to get inside the box, what would you do here? You try an L1 trigger the man with a red dot by him. L1 trigger. So what, what kind of L1? So would you face him or would you, which play would you trigger? Uh, to say that the... the, the, the... If, if I if I numbered them, for example, uh, I, I would probably try number two. Number two, okay. Now remember, I said to you going back to the other session where I said if you do the L one trigger, it pushes the defensive line going back. So my first course of action is there's two things I'd like to achieve here. I want him to run back, so his defensive line moves in position number one. 
to position number two. And you'll, I'll show you this in a second. That's the first thing when I do the L1 trigger. The second thing is when the defensive line moves back, it's going to create more space for my attacker. So you can see my eyes. When I do the L1 trigger, like there, I look towards my strikers immediately. Do you see that? So I have the ball. I know there's space around me. There's no one next to me. I did the L1 trigger and I'm aiming at Lucas. And look, I'm watching at the strikers. And then you see how the space opened up to Sun. Now, realistically, looking back, I should have passed the ball to Sun there. I just didn't think he'd reposition that place. But you see how the, the space opened up for him. So you can see before where the CDM was man marking Sun completely. You can see here, he was tr basically in, a, in effect tracking the run. Um, but then you see when I do the L1 trigger, you see Sun comes back on side. So the players will come back on side on themselves. And that's what I'm trying to say to you. Be patient with your CDMs. Don't force the ball. So I do an L1 trigger and then the pass gets made to Sun. Then I take a touch and I do a fake shot. Unfortunately, the pass then, well, well I suppose you can say my opponent, then it reads the pass. Now, this is going to be a common occurrence for you. And that's why I say the two CDMs are important. That's why I say if you use a 4-2-3-1 or a 4 4 2 Whatever formation you use, these two CDMs are going to be the most important thing. Now, if you want to, in theory, you can do an L1 button, L1 plus X, and send a CDM going forward. Now, the thing is, if you do that, you're going to see a lot of your favorite pro players do that. But the thing is, if you do that, you're going to probably concede from the counterattack. So you've got to think about it. It's nil-nil. How many players do I need to commit going forward? So the way that I look at it is I simply recycle the ball up until I can create a chance. And then when I get the ball over here, I then use a skill move. Now we're going to go into skill moves in a, later on in this, in this fit, in this, in this session, but I'll normally use, for example, a simple one. Now, a couple of examples I'll use is a fake shot. And this one, it was actually a really good opportunity, but he actually defended the right way. A fake shot is really, really good. Um, you can use, of course, agile dribbling to go one way and then go the other way or strafe dribbling or a lack of ketter. Any form of skill move would be effective to beat the goalkeeper, to beat the defender one on one. But it's the thing. Only use a skill move here. A lot of players, they end up using the skill moves outside the box over here to beat a defender. And then they shoot from outside the box. This is why there's such a low conversion rate, because what people do is they think, OK, let me panic. Let me just get the ball. So what they'll do is if I go back, for example, over here. Let's say, for example, the earlier clip. So if I just go back a couple of seconds over here. One second while it plays on. So let's say, for example, here, when the initial situation, when I had the ball, my CDM, a lot of people will get the ball over here in this situation, and then they will use some sort of skill move to beat this player. Now, not everyone's going to be running, back, running at you, but even if you do, I'm facing away from goal here. The chance of me beating him, maybe with the scoop turn, I could beat him, but it's not... 100% fluid. You see that? Because he ran back there. He defended. He knew what I was doing. So that's the key with the recycle. You'll understand this when you get into the game. So whenever you go forward, only pass the ball to the striker if you know he's inside the box and has a chance for him to score. That's the initial theory. And that way, when you create the, when you create the pass, for example, like here, then you take the risk with a skill move. In fact, it should have probably been a penalty. I mean, to be honest, I actually beat him over there, but it, will, it should have been a penalty. But the key thing is I do it only when it's a 1v1. And you can see it was on, but I don't even think he touched the ball there. It should have been a penalty, but that's just FIFA for you. Sometimes those things happen. Does everyone understand the initial theory for that? I just wanted to show that example. It was a bit, I suppose you can say, complicated in that way. But I want to show you where to make the pass. Because when people are making the passes, I would say, in this area, as opposed to inside the box. Does that make sense? Anyone got any questions in regards to that? None at all. Any questions on why in that position or in regards to a long shot, anything like that? No. Okay, okay. so that, that's the first segment, okay? And this is something to bear in mind. So I'm going to let this game play on. So you can see, for example, like here, um, I ended up winning the ball back. It's the exact same thing. Now watch this here. Remember I said you did the first sample? Do a one, two, okay? I did the exact same thing. I will refresh the ball to my CDM. I get the ball with Dembele. In this situation, can I go forward? Yes, I could probably go down the wing. Now, this is what's going to be the, the confusing part, right? When do you go forward and when do you not? It's all about improvisation. Realistically, as I said to you, Sun's not in position, so I recycle the ball. And if I can't get through, I use a two CDMs like that, an example. Use the L1 trigger, get the ball to the striker. That's the first step. So you can see every single time I get the ball back, so you see when I win the ball back here and I get a bit lucky, do you know why I ended up getting this chance and scoring this goal? It's not because I play this very, very well. It's because why? He made a mistake. 
And this is what I want to say to you is most of your goals that you can see will be from this, this is like this. You'll get the ball, for example, like here. You won't see your opponent running towards you. You'll lose the ball. And for example, like here, see how easy I score there? It's from a mistake. I didn't play anything good here. All I did literally was I get, I get the ball to Sun. Now you see here, again, it's the understanding. A lot of players here will decide to run inside the box. Now, whenever you, whenever you get the ball inside the box with your striker, think of it like, okay, can I shoot from this far out? That's the logic. So if you could, if you get the ball, for example, with Sun over here, let's say you beat this defender somehow, if it's a 1v1. If you shoot from this far out, what's the chance of you scoring? It's relatively low from this area. Yes, you can argue you can do a finesse shot, but logic will always tell you, maybe finishing is not the best this year, but logic will always tell you it's too far away. So you have to get closer to the, to the goal. How do you do that? Well, if your opponent, has, if you have the ball with your CDMs, the L1 trigger is one way. If you have the ball with your attacker, it's the exact same thing with the 1-2, L1 plus X. So again, it's the most simplest things that I use to create the chances. And this is why I'm trying to say is that if your opponent uses offside trap, once you get into the like elite division, the high divisions, your opponent's going to be aggressive. They're not going to be sitting back all the time. They'll be using offside traps. The key thing is to react. If you're not short, you do a one, two, like for example, like there, I passed the ball back to someone who was closer. Okay, now there's a chance for me to go inside the space. I just take a bit of a bluff and I take a shot towards goal. Does that make sense? So do you understand how the L1 trigger and the one, twos are used to push the players further inside the box? Does that make sense to everyone? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Has anyone got? Any have you got a question? Sorry, carry yes. on. Yes, I have a question. I think I struggle sometimes a lot with the first touch with the of the striker. So a lot of times I am able to get the ball to the striker, but my first touch is really bad in such a way that uh, the slight pressure from the defender he gets the ball and then yeah I uh, I lose the attack basically. So I don't know if maybe you have some tips regarding that or or something but this is a common thing as well losing the ball it kind of goes back to and this is why the, the the first 15 minutes of this of this session is going to be the most important if you remember one thing remember the first 15 minutes um just a quick question um for you guys where should i be taking a touch in this situation so i'm just going to draw a clock so imagine that's 12 that's six you can say whatever number just shout out whatever numbers you think where should i be taking the touch here From here, I will say... Um, Anyone can answer this question, by the way. Yeah, go on. You can go first. Go on. I will say nine. Nine. Okay. So I'll, I'll, put, I'll, put down ni uh, I'll put down nine in red. Um, anyone else got any other, any other... Six. Six. Okay, we'll put six down. Anyone else? I think I'd probably go for nine as well, even though it's probably not the right thing to do. Okay, nine. So we have... Two on nine, one on six. Anyone else? Okay. Now, in this situation, all the answers with respect are right to some extent, but are wrong. And what I mean by that is you have to protect the ball first. Remember I said to you the example, if, I, let's say, if, if you take a touch, let's say backwards, right? So let's say example like here, you take a touch backwards, yeah? He's literally just going to run into you. Remember, I said, remember going back to two sessions ago, I talked about defending, right? You're running jock, you're defending the angle towards goal. If someone touches the ball and faces towards you, you can literally just run into them and get the ball. So you have to protect the ball going first. So I would always take a touch on this side. And you're going to say to me, why would you do that? Are you, why would you not go forward when there's a chance for you to go forward? And then I go back to the original theory. If I can't score from this angle, what is the point? Maybe I can try to, okay, maybe on a very high level, I'll show you some examples in a second. I could do less stick dribbling and try to dribble past that player and get past him. Okay, maybe on a high level, I can do that. But if I can't go through it, and if I, if I just do a skill move, I'm just going to run into two players over here. It's no point. And even if I do beat him, let's say I beat one of these guys. Can I shoot from this? Let's say, for example, he comes towards me. And let's say I beat him over there, okay? Let's say, in theory, I beat him. If he makes a mistake, you can still run back and cover the angle and track back. Then I have to beat the goalkeeper from an off angle. Can I score from here? Probably not. And that is why I say protect the ball going first. And now, as you can see, when I get the ball, I take a touch. Okay, it's a bit, I would say, is more towards five o'clock. And by doing that, my body is facing now. Listen, contrary to belief, he cannot get the ball off you. If he's directly behind you, contrary to what everyone else says, he cannot get the ball. It's impossible. He'll concede a foul. 
Very, very unlikely is it for someone, for example, to take their foot all the way around. It's unlikely. Unless someone's coming at you at an angle. Now, because he's facing this way and he's facing this way, taking a touch upwards would be risky because he's coming at this angle. So he can basically go like this, switch that play and get the ball. So the safest place for me to take a touch in theory is this way because he's too far away. And these two players, as you can see, if you like kind of, if you kind of see the opposite of the other sides, the safest thing is around about this area. Do you see that? That's the safest area. If I take it here, 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 I've lost the ball. And that is what I mean by losing the ball in the final third, wasting the chance. But by taking a touch into safety, I then do a one, two, and then I get the ball. And then I take a touch going upwards. Okay, now I'm close inside the box. There's a chance. As you can see here, half a chance. I take a shot and go towards goal. But do you see why in that situation... One second, I'll just... I'm sorry. Um, yeah, do you see, for example... Um, let me spotlight this. Sorry. Um, do you see, for example, why I say in this situation, even in this one, to be honest, looking back now, it's only because there was space on the right-hand side. Do you see that? There was evident and clear space on this side that I tried to take a shot across goal. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did you have to do a skill move? I was <laughs> actually just... No. Up, up, up I, I, shot. So I, I just literally, I tried a bit of it. So it was a counter-attack. So I'll, again, the, the main reason why I scored because I got the ball here, right? Then when I got the ball here, I did a one-two. I can't score from here. So I do a one-two, get the ball here. And from experience, I knew that it was enough because how I knew this, and this is something that will come with experience. So he's controlling this player at the time. So the white cursor is a player he's controlling. Because he's controlling this player, I knew, for example, he had to switch from this player to that player. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I knew, for example, by the time he switches to that player and moves up, like, see, look, I, look, look, look at my left analog stick. My player is already exiting before that player is selected. Can everyone see that? My player is already making the, the exit before he's even got, before he's even switched that player. That's the, that's the key difference. I'm watching that white cursor and I'm just thinking, okay, you know what? He hasn't moved yet. Look, I'm already into the space. Now he switched. Don't forget manual jockeying. Now, of course, you could try to defend the angle towards goal here. One second too late. It's a chance when you take my shot and I take it. Does that make sense? Well, that is, of course, a segment from my group coaching. I normally hold these on Tuesdays around 7 p.m. UK time every single week. And uh, remember, this is my group coaching, not one-on-one. -on -one. So these are only for group coachings. I'm doing this exclusively this year with Gamers Academy on their platform. And uh, as I said, right now, they're running a seven-day free trial. So if you click on the link down below, it's my link so you can get the free trial. Um, and just press try for free. And then you can sign up for seven days. And of course, you can cancel whenever you want. So there's no loss. Um, don't forget, I do them on Tuesdays, uh, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. UK time. Um, and that is a normal time I do the sessions. And you normally know what my coaching, group coaching sessions are about on a weekly basis. Of course, the other coaches there are available as well. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. And of course, I'll catch you in the next group coaching session. If you do come, or if not, in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take it easy, boys. And I'll catch you next time.